Hello and welcome to the Joint Dota League Season 3 here on Heflet TV 2. Well, this is going to be a best of two series between found new friends as well as Low Spirit Carditos. And for your casters, I'm going to be Grandis V, and I'm also going to be joined by Mike Loris. Or at least I think I'm going to be joined by Mike Loris for this game. It's the first band that's coming out. Every single time, like, I press the mic and it shows it is no longer muted, but it's still muted. So I have to, like, do it over again. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm here. There we go. All right, so as you said, best of two, and this is going to be played on US East, I believe. So might be some server troubles coming down the line, but uh, we're well into the draft as the bans are done. Tidehunter is going to be kicked out early, and Viper is going to get through. Yeah, I don't know. The bans really aren't that surprising, but pretty much the cream of the crop as far as supports are concerned are still left there. For um, either of these two teams to pick up, Scarth Mage, Shadow Shaman, as well as Earthshaker are all available. As far as the first pick for Low Speaker Ardita, however, they go for the Faces Void and Scarth Mage to follow that up. Wow, I've never seen this combination a million times before. So, we got the Mystic Flare, Chronosphere combination. When you put it onto a Viper, it's not the best because of Corrosive Skin. It does give him that additional bit of uh, resistances towards those magic skills, but still, it's pretty much capable of killing off any uh, one else, especially when faces void, gives a couple of taps within that chronosphere. So, Los Picarditos off to a very strong start in a good yeah, late six, game or mid game tom uh, combo. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we've definitely seen it plenty of times before, and even that Viper is not really going to be immune to it. Although, if he does get off to a good start, he could be probably the target that they're going to avoid inside the chronosphere and then deal with them a little bit later. As far as found new friends, I wouldn't be surprised to see a Shadow Shaman pick by them. I'm hoping for something a little bit out of the ordinary, but for now they're thinking of what they want to pick up. Go for a Death Prophet, do it, and push action and adventure and stuff like that. I mean, they're burning into the reserve time for their second pick. I feel like if they would have, if they were going to pick up a Shadow Shaman, they would have already picked it up. Fair enough. I don't know, we'll just have to see. Brewmaster, the pickup for found new friends. Uh, maybe just hesitating because it is picking into a Scarth Mage as well as a Faceless Void. And well, against those two heroes, it's fairly scary for the Brewmaster because if he gets caught out inside the Chronosphere after clapping and before he gets the split off, he's going to be focused down very easily. And then you also have the Silence on the Scarth Mage. Um, but still, I think he's a really solid hero. If you're able to uh, get your split off, you can uh, put the Drunken Haze as well as the Cyclone onto the Faceless Void and really delay his impact inside the team fights, as well as just being decent against Scarth Mage while you're in the split, because uh, most of your units are magic immune. Yeah, unfortunately, Faces Void does kind of have that trump card in the Chronosphere. There is really nothing you can do about that unless you're caught on the outside, in which case Brewmaster will be able to contribute quite a bit with that Primal Split. But if his little Brewlings, if his little Aspects are caught inside of that Chronosphere, well, He's just going to have to suck it up. He probably won't die unless it's Damn super, super late game, in which case Faces Void might be able to focus down all three of those aspects. It I seems unlikely, but it's possible. So he'll keep him safe. He'll keep himself safe, but at the same time, he probably, or he might not get as much done as he would really like to, as the second band phase is well, going along Radiant pretty quickly. Death Prophet and an Alchemist band from Bound New Friends, and then we see a Wraith King being kicked out from Los Picarditos. What do you think about this Alchemist ban? I don't really think he's that strong a hero nowadays. Honestly, neither do I. I think, really, your roaming duo with the Scarth Mage is more than likely going to be Shadow Shaman or Earthshaker, which are still both in the pool. And I think that's probably how Los Picarditos would lane him, is if you have a mid-Alchemist with a Faceless Void as well, they don't really combo that well together. Although you can Acid Spray inside the Chrono, it's nothing compared to something along the lines of an Earthshaker, and although the Minus Armor is a little bit of nice utility, you can get um, definitely a lot more out of some other picks. Yeah, it's it's a little bit interesting to see that band out, and it's going to leave a lot of heroes in the pool that I'm not sure if Founding Friends want to deal with, to be honest. Yeah, I feel like if you're going to be getting that just for the minus armor, like synergy with the Chronosphere, then you might as well just be picking up the Ventral Spirit. It's like almost objectively a better hero at that, and you get a little bit different utility. But, I mean, he does have a good amount of roaming potential, but... Uh, I don't really think Los Picarditos would have wanted the Alchemist to roam with their Skywrath Mage because the concoction is physical and Skywrath Mage amplifies magical. You have kind of an awkward interaction there, which is a little bit uh, it's a little bit undesirable. You want to dish as much magical damage as you can within your support roaming combination. Yeah, for sure. 
I don't know, it, it is definitely an interesting band, but maybe something that found new friends have seen Los Brigaditos playing around with that they don't want to have to play up against. For now, Los Brigaditos are going to take their time with this next pick because they are going to have to uh, pick and choose what they're going to use for themselves and then also what they're going to leave left for found new friends to uh, take up in their uh, second couple of picks. Marana is going to pick up for Los Brigaditos. Scarth Mage and Marana as a roaming duo isn't the best, although Chronosphere with the Faceless Void uh, can set up the arrows very easily. Yeah, I expect, as of right now, the Marana should be played as a core, because a roaming Marana, as you said, with Skyrath is very difficult to land those arrows, and if you do land those arrows, it's going to be on the Brewmaster and Viper. Tanky heroes that uh, will low damage heroes after the arrow, the Marana and Skyrath Mage, probably can't cut through all the HP without some substantial help from whoever's already sitting in that lane, so... I'd like to see that Marana get a little bit of setup with another support Five, pick from Los Brigaditos and really start to set something up with that Marana because even if Marana doesn't get that much in the early die. mid stage, they'll have the faceless void to fall back on. Yeah, for sure. Found new friends. I don't know, there's still lots of great supports for them to pick up. They'll go ahead and snag the Shadow Shaman here. No big surprises. I think that would probably be one of Los Brigaditos' uh, top picks for their secondary to support to go with that Scarlet Mage as well as the Marana. Uh, but then again, if they wanted it, they probably would have first picked that out of the uh, second banning stage. Yeah, found new friends. Going to be happy with the Shadow Shaman pick. Not only will it uh, give them a whole lot of pushing and a little bit of lane control, all that good stuff, but it also gives them a stun. Because right now, Viper and Brewmaster, Damn, currently so without go. crowd control outside of the Brewmaster split, you want to have that Hex and Shackles when you're that dealing with the Marana and the Faceless Void. So I would say... Getting the Shadow Shaman is a great pickup, but they're going to want to pick up even more stuns. I wouldn't mind seeing an Earthshaker picked up from Found New Friends as their secondary support. Yeah, for sure would give them another great Blink Initiator, as well as a well-placed Fissure can be very disruptive to a Faceless Void inside his Chronosphere if you're able to block him off from the targets that he wants to be auto-attacking off. And even if he's able to uh, go around the Fissure, it's still a lot of wasted uptime on his auto-attacks. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely think an Earthshaker would be really solid for Found New Friends. Yeah, Earthshaker Shadow Shaman is a pretty good roam combination. You get a lot of initiation range, especially if you're going to do a level 1 invade or, hell, even level 1 roam. Sand King kind of would have done a similar thing for Found New Friends, but it'll be picked up instead by Los Picarditos, pushing Marana most likely into a core role. I don't want to see her go into the mid lane because mid lane Marana versus either Brewmaster or Viper is not going to be fun times there. But Sand King, Skyrath Mage, it's a, a decent enough roam combination, but you can't really roam from level 1. You really need the Sand King to get a couple of levels, uh, get that Concussive Shot online, maybe get level 2, possibly level 3 Damn, of the Burrow Strike. Once that happens, then they can go kill things. Yeah, for sure. I don't know, Sand King feels like it would fit a lot better in the Los Bricarditos lineup than an Earthshaker, as with the Faces Void, Earthshaker sure. can't do much in the Chronosphere. But as a Sand King, if he gets his Blink Dagger, he'll be able to channel his Epicenter and then Blink into the middle of the Chronosphere to get all of that guaranteed damage off. Even though he's not able to move or do anything afterwards until the Chronosphere is done, that's a lot of guaranteed damage. If you catch out um, three or more heroes, maybe more than two. Um, but yeah. Still, I think it's a really solid pick for them. With the Skyrath Mage, it makes up for Sand King's weakness of Burrow Strike early on, being just a pretty bad spell, mostly because of the uh, lack of range that it has in order to catch people out. But with Concussive Shot, you're able to uh, get yourself closer in for the Burrow Strike stun, and that can decently set up for a Marana era as well, so pretty solid tri lane coming out from Los Bricarditos. They're also setting up around the Ancient Seal, picking up three heroes that do quite a hefty amount of magical damage. So they'll be able to synergize with Ancient Seal quite heavily from the Skywrath Mage. And whoa, okay. Radiant Found new Light. friends going to pick up the Keeper of the Light. Usually you don't see this hero picked unless the enemy team has like a Enigma and a Nature's Prophet and an Enchantress, but going for a lot of push. They're going to go for it anyway. The Blinding Light is pretty good against Faceless Void in the Chronosphere, Damn but I think that's about it. Yeah, Faceless Void might be forced into getting an MKB fairly uh, early on. Not as like his first item, obviously, but later on as a damage item, we'll probably opt that route because a lot of mischance is going to come out from Found New Friends with that Blinding Light as well as the Drunken Haze. Um, yeah, the Keeper of Light really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, to be honest. Um, yeah, as you said, usually you pick him up for the counter pushing, but there's really not a whole lot that's going to come out from Los Bricarditos as far as units are concerned. It is going to be annoying, and maybe they want to delay the game in order to have like a really explosive late game carry. Right now, Los Bricarditos ban out the Chaos Knight, 
which honestly I think would have been a solid pick for founding friends is Los Picarditos don't have the best ways to deal with them um, outside of really the Sand King's epicenter to clear those illusions. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's something that I wasn't expecting at all, and it's kind of throwing me for a loop. We'll have to see what Fanny friends are going to do with this pick. Trying to think of the Keeper-like combinations. Phantom Lancer comes to mind as when Phantom Lancer was known so uh, joyously as the Cancer Lancer. He was usually paired up with Keeper of the Light. You got some really solid split push going. Having that Chakra Magic in lane means you could spam out those Lances nonstop. Uh, so that might be what they want to go for. I mean, I can't imagine they would just go for Keeper of the Light for shits and giggles. They have to have some sort of hero combo in mind with that hero. And, well, Phantom Lancer, yeah, trying to think of go. what else. CK would have been a great one. He could go very well with that, that unlimited sense. mana pool of the Keeper of the Light. But as far as carry heroes go, there aren't that many. And it's going to be a Slardar. Okay, it's uh now the keeper of the light pick just doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, it, it really doesn't to me. With the Slardar, I mean I can I can see Slardar working out with the rest of their other heroes. Shadow Shaman and Slardar definitely really good inside the Roshan pit, lots of minus armor, and they could play fairly aggressively, but the keeper of light just seems like the odd man out in this lineup. The unlimited man is going to be nice for the Slardar, I suppose. But maybe we're going to be seeing a Brewmaster, Shadow Shaman, Keeper of the Light tri lane, or maybe even dual lanes from Found New Friends. I don't know. This Keeper of Light, I really hate it, to be honest. I think Los Picarditos just have the more standard and more stable hero pickups. Found New Friends' lineup would be so much freaking better if that Keeper of the Light was not a Keeper of the Light, but instead was a Vengeful Spirit. Because then they would have this whole minus armor strategy thing going. They would have an answer to the Chronosphere if your Viper is caught out and dropping low due to Mystic Flare or whatever. Just swap them out and you're golden. But yeah, Keeper of the Light, he won't be able to do any of that. And really, the recall from Keeper of the Light is going to have very minor utility. You're not going to be split pushing with a Slardar. That's probably not going to be what's happening. They want to group up in team fight. That's what their comp is kind of built around the uh, the giant group that goes in and just smashes things. And Keeper of the Light does not like to be a part of that. I mean, the heal eventually, if he get, maybe gets an Aghanim Scepter, will be relevant. But aside from that, he'll just be a walking, blinding light. Yeah. I don't know. We'll have to see how they're going to utilize it. And I hope to be pleasantly surprised. But right now, I'm just not seeing it. But as the pause does come out from uh, both of the teams, we are going to have time to introduce all of the players on the side of the Radiant. We are going to have Los Picarditos. With the Invoker, played by Citrix, we're going to have the Skyrath Mage, handled by uh, Messonese. Nice. Link playing on the face of this Void, Portentious playing on the Sand King with Nate17, or Nate7, on the Marana. Yeah. Alright, so I get to go over the Found New Friends side, and they have some interesting names. We got F Star D E. I'm told that it's pronounced Fade, so Fade is going to be on the Marana. Box is going to be on the currently invisible Viper, at least on my screen. Uh, RCG is on the Shadow Shaman. He's going to be playing support with 419. And the Slardar, I don't really know. They were trying to describe how to say all their names in the lobby beforehand. It's Pandarin backwards, but he didn't say he wanted to be called Pandarin. But Naradnap. I'm just going to call him Pandarin. Naradnap. I, I don't know. There's just not a great way to go about pronouncing some of these names. But Pandarin is probably the least painful. Unfortunately, though, he's not playing the Brewmaster, so minus style points. Definitely. Viper has shown up on my screen. He was actually, like, falling in, but from a really odd angle, his model was, like, all contorted. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he is back to normal for now, as both teams are going to start making their early rotations, and, well, it looks like down in bottom, instead of seeing an offlane faces void, as I was kind of expecting, we're going to have a safe lane faces void with an offlane Marana, Without any supports, I don't really like this landing choice coming out from Los Bricarditos. Putting a solo Marana up against a Shadow Shaman Slardar lane at the very least is going to be very, I don't know, difficult for her to really get anything out of it. And Marana, you'd like to see her get some kills and maybe even uh, look for some roams, but as an offlane Marana, she's not really going to be able to do that as we might have a level 1 skirmish as Sanking walking very aggressively up into the Brewmaster, but without boots, he shouldn't be able to catch him up and he won't. Yeah, I'd like to see Brickies swap the Marana right now for the Faces Void. Put Faces Void up there, because all he needs is a little bit of experience. Once he gets to level 6, then he is in business. And Marana will add a lot of kill potential to this bottom lane, whereas Faces Void doesn't really have that much in comparison. So I think that simple swap would have been nice. 
But uh, we kind of glanced over the Invoker pick from Brickies because we were so dumbfounded by what Found New Friends were picking up. But it's going to be a really solid combination with the Sand King and with the Marana. So you want them to play together. You want the Burrow Strike to set up for the Arrow so that you can set up for a Sun Strike. That is not going to happen, at least not for a, a pretty long time. Though Invoker, even if he doesn't do that, he will be able to contribute a lot of magic damage in this game, especially when combined with the Faceless Void, Chronosphere, and the Ancient Seal from the Skywrath Mage. Yeah. I don't know, on the side of Found New Friends, I'm liking this combo pick a little bit more now that I see how they're going to lane it with the dual lane offlane Brewmaster as well as Keeper Light. That's going to make this lane a lot stronger. Uh, just making sure that both of them can spam out the waves, it can put some pressure onto this Faceless Void. And if the supports do try to roam away, they might even be able to get a kill, especially once Brewmaster gets his level 6. It's not entirely on board with it, but... As the lanes have panned out, I think that their lane, lanes are going to go a lot better for them. Marana shouldn't be able to get very much. Viper should win up against the Invoker, although later on Invoker can pick up, especially once he gets Forge Spirits. Um, but yeah, bottom should be where we see most of the action. Yeah, I expect that to be the case as well. Faceless Void is probably not going to die in this lane. I mean, he has enough yeah. tangos to feed a small country. And he also has the Sand King and Skyrath Mage right behind him. So if anyone's going to die, I feel like it's either going to be the Keeper who's going to get time walked upon, or the Skyrath Mage as he does try to go for a kill and Fade is just going to you know beat him up with his stick. So I would imagine that's how the lane is going to shape up in the end. Though, I mean, Brewmaster should be looking to pretty much be spamming out his clap whenever he gets near the Void because eventually F419 uh, will be able to help him out with that man. He's going to charge up an Illuminate, which will hit pretty hard onto the Sand King. Illuminate level 1 is a pretty substantial skill, though. You can't really afford to cast it too many times without being level 2 for that Chakra Magic. Yeah, he does have a Clarity and almost hitting that level 2 on the Keeper of Light, and there he goes. He takes it now, and the spam is going to come out from this lane, and they're going to make themselves a nuisance up against Link, but as you said, plenty of Tangos to go through that damage, so Faceless Void should be fine. Um, yeah, for now, Faceless Void blast hitting very well. Marana has been kind of pressured out of the lane, will go back in order to block, but has managed to find her level 3 after a couple of creep waves. The Skyrath Mage kind of backed off, he's now running the polling operations, although not going to pull that time, uh, looking for a triple stack that he won't be able to time correctly. As the supports aren't showing in lane, uh, Faces Void eats one clap, I think, but that's going to be it. Oh, now they're putting a lot of damage onto Fade. Portentious is going to come from the side. This will be a very easy Burrow Strike to land. Sun Strike will miss, I believe. Three-man clap, but it's not going to be enough as the Void does get a very lucky bash there. But Brewmaster getting a couple lucky dodges, not going to be enough. First Blood being drawn by the Faceless Void as the Brewmaster caught unaware by the Wraparound gank. We might be seeing that one more time. Shadow Shaman, though, a top lane. Actually, he's gone for level one Ether Shock. I, you rarely ever see that. And, uh, well, it's going to mean that he doesn't have any kill potential. He's out of mana, I mean, and without the Disable, they actually cannot kill this Marana just yet. Yeah, so Marana should be just fine, especially if she checked out the uh, mana situation in this lane. Not sure if Slider has a clarity, and no, he doesn't. He has picked up the Ring of Health for laning. I'm not a huge fan of this choice by the Pandaren here. Um, I don't know, I think you want Blink as fast as possible on Slider to just get aggressive. Um... I definitely wouldn't like it to be upgrades on the Vanguard, although it'll avoid a decent amount of damage. The majority of the damage coming out from Low Speaker D does is magical, so I think like Power Treads Blink into BKB would be my favorite build. Yeah, it might just be a casual Ring of Health because he's yeah. taking a lot of chip damage, so I, I won't mind that, although it is quite a hefty investment as now Fade is going to... How the hell did that Custom Shot not go to the Brewmaster? That made no sense. Very little. I thought it was the closest enemy hero, but apparently not. Um, not sure what the rules are on that. Yeah, it says closest yeah. hero. How did Brewmaster <laughs> avoid that? The game is broken. Ice Frog, please fix. In the meantime, top lane, they do get the shackle onto the Marana. She does have a leap, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Shadow Shaman with a couple more right clicks. Going to secure the kill up on top. Yeah, so in the end, bottom. Not going to be a kill just as we have a Sunstrike attempt going completely misses. He's manning up against Faceless Void that will cost him his life a secondary time as we have an Illuminate. Shot the way of the Skyrath Mage, but for now this Brewmaster has died twice and just really hasn't had a great start. I really don't know why he decided to fight that one. I mean, Drunken Brawler is a great skill and everything, but you're not going to... It's not going to save you in times like that, and they're putting a, quite a bit of hurt onto the Faceless Void. Like, he's already down 7 out of his 8 starting Tangos, so... They're putting a lot of damage onto him, but at the end of the day, if your Brewmaster's dying, all that damage doesn't actually mean anything because he's getting his farm, he's getting his levels, he's well on his way to his level 6, and he already has his power tread, so his Faceless Void is doing just fine in this bottom lane. Yeah, I don't know. Once he runs out of Tango's completely, he might be in a little bit of trouble, but I don't know, I think they have plenty of regen in the lane still. On the supports, we have some Tango's on the Skyrath Mage, and Sand King 
Uh, not sure what his situation is. He's completely out, just has the boots. Um, but yeah, for now it is going to calm down as Sand King's going to start sandstorming away inside the jungle. He does have his level 3. Uh, that might have missed a stack for him. I think he's still going to be able to get it. Um, unfortunately, there's Invoker. Oh, Viper going to be able to dive onto the... Um, Invoker, I didn't expect that to happen actually, but yeah, Cold Snap under tower not going to save you when you have three points of Nether Toxin acting Up. mostly on you. And now under the Mirana, she's shackled up. Follow up, Crush. Will they have enough damage? Nate has this leap away. They only need one more Shadow Shum. Picks it up. You know, Mirana's getting that leap off, but in the end, all that's doing is securing the kill for the Shadow Shaman. So Slaughter is not getting any of these kills because the Mirana is leaping away, which is making it a little bit awkward for this top lane. Of course, Shadow Shaman is going to be okay with that. He's well on his way to his Arcane Boots, which is certainly going to help, but Slaughter is going to be a little bit more poor as this game continues. But meantime, Fade in the bottom lane is going to land a clap well onto the Skyrath Mage with the nice Illuminate. Just right clicks, and now Link also pretty weak as well. They get the sun, the sun Strike in with the Burrow Strike, but Faces Void. He will get himself out of there just fine. Brewmaster wants more. He's got six stick charges, but he doesn't have the movement speed to compete with the power treads. And now here comes Teleportation. It's going to be the Skyrath Mage and Fade. Suddenly, way out of position as Invoker also comes from the north. This is going to be one for one as the Illuminate does fly through and kill off the Faces Void. Keeper of the Light trying to scare you away, and he will be successful in doing so. But Brewmaster, he dies for a third time, and this Brewmaster really shouldn't be making trades right now. And a Vanguard is picked up on the Slardar. Let's hear it. I don't know, I, I've already kind of gave my thoughts on an item. He picks it up at a great timing, however, so... I don't know, if he's able to get his boots and potentially get some kills by playing incredibly aggressively with this pick... Uh, I don't know, I, I'm okay with it, but I still think Blink Dagger offers you so much more as a Slardar. I think boots is just yeah. a better start, especially against <laughs> Marana. Like, if you get power gems, yeah. you could kill the Marana, but meantime, bottom lane... Time walk in. Does he have a Chronosphere? Oh, it looked like he had a Chronosphere, judging by how aggressively he played, but he's just going to get clapped right in the face. Looks like uh, 419 is currently out of regen, so he's going to probably end up basing. But that's yeah. fine for the bottom lane. I don't know. For now, he's not. He's sitting around. He chakras himself once and might illuminate. Um, he needs to be careful, though. Time walk in. If he gets a bash onto that uh, Keeper of Light, he's going to be fairly dead. And, I don't know, maybe you'll see another lucky concussive shot onto him. As well, they jump on to um, the Brewmaster, and he's caught out in the silence, gets sunstriked as well. There's the Illuminate, lands on the Faces Void. They get the double clap as well. I'm not sure who's going to die first. The Time Walk comes through, and Link is going to be able to get that kill on a bash onto 419. Double kill for Messines. Uh, I don't really know what the Dire are doing on this bottom lane. It's like, you yeah. could just fall back and heal, and you'll be just fine. They're trying to, like, get these miracles, uh, thunderclaps, and illuminate combinations, and to be fair, if they did manage to line it up correctly, that would have been a couple kills for them, but it's just an unnecessary risk that they're taking, and they're ending up just feeding themselves to this basis void. Like, he's well on his way to his basket madness. Fortunately for them, top lane's going very well. I mean, a couple kills of Mirana, and now the Serpent Ward's deployed. However, it will get denied by the Mirana. Well played. That's not that much base damage that Mirana's working with, but she sneaks the arrow in. Yeah. So, they'll be able to secure themselves a little bit of help up in the top lane, and mid is also in their favor, but will it make up for a Brewmaster that's going to have very little impact? Blink Dagger is pretty much a distant dream for him. He won't be forced to go to the Arcane Boots as they have the Chronosphere onto 2. 419 gonna get blown to shreds with the Sunstrike coming through, but I don't know, Neradnap, he's coming in, does not have a Blink Dagger, and I don't know, he's slowed down with the Concussive Shot, and I think everybody's going to be just fine, or will they? The Sprint Movement Speed, helping him chase 3, gets body blocked by the Creep, and well, I think that's going to be the end of that. I actually didn't really notice how much this Invoker was getting stomped in this lane. He only has 10 CS versus the Viper's 52. Like, Invoker shouldn't be losing this lane by this this much. I just assumed it was going to be even. But holy crap, this Invoker is not having a good time. Fortunately for him, he's getting some Sunstrike kills, so you know that's really helpful. But Viper, with a fully, almost a fully aggressive build and maxing out Nether Toxin very early, is putting a lot of damage on that Invoker. And Invoker... Though he does have two points in Quas, that's just simply not enough regen to compete with a Viper. He did die once solo to the Viper, and now our CG is so almost wrapping around, but instead they're all going to go to the bottom lane. They have the Serpent Wards up in 20 seconds, and it looks like they're going to want to take this Joe One Tower. Yeah, it looks like that is going to be the case. Is the only one that's not there is the Viper. They're leaving Rana up alone on top to pick up a little bit more uh, CS, who's actually doubling up the CS of the Invoker in mid. I would have expected the Invoker, especially after going Phase Boots, to be able to uh, CS evenly up against the Viper. But yeah, as you said, the Max Out Nether Toxin really paying 
dividends for them as mid as they're committing a lot of heroes and just sacking this tier one no reason to really put much more into that and i don't know this viper does he have tp support available to him it looks like he does so i don't know i don't think viper is going to die and this is just going to be all around a better trade for uh, fnf they need an arrow to land or a chronosphere but chronosphere is not up for another 20 seconds and viper smells something he's going to play it very safe behind his tier one tower and well, Brickies, they can, in theory, go for this one as Scarath Mage does reveal the positioning of the Viper, and Viper, with the phase boots, is just going to book it. He's going to be just fine. I think that was, yes, Dark Green did ping out the Scarath Mage location. They actually had a very defensive Observer Ward on their side of the river near the tower to reveal that fact. So, no secrets just yet, as the top lane is probably going to be in the most trouble. This time they have a Chronosphere. They don't have an Epicenter or anything like that, but Time Walk in, Chronosphere, Sunstrike, Arrow... That's a dead brewmaster. Pretty much. He does have his level 6, but when you're stuck in a chronosphere, can't really put that to good use. I don't know, this brewmaster is just not having a good time. That's his fifth death this game, and hasn't been able to find a single kill. As Slardar, looking for blood, he has the PTs as well as the Vanguard. I don't know, he gets the hex off as well as a beautiful Servant Ward Trap. With the minus armor, Link should be shredded to death, and yeah, he will be. Wouldn't have been able to get off that time walk. In the meantime, mid lane has a shot onto that Viper. The arrow is going to be thrown, but it flies wide. Then he walks right into the Mystic Flare. Don't do that, Viper. That's a bad idea. Brewmaster is going to get in here with a rock onto Citrix, and it will land, throwing the Marana up into the air. But do they have any True Sight? Please tell me they have True Sight. One sentry as Marana is going to crater back into an Illuminate Rock combination. Illuminate wasn't charged for very long, however. Burrow Strike onto the Keeper Light will slow him down. And it looks like that should be it, although Brewmaster are going to get snapped up. It's going to be just fine. Arrow will fly, will connect on a creep. So it looks like everyone will be able to escape from that one. But Viper did go down. I mean, he only has two points across his skin, so he's not too tanky. And crucially, he's not going to go for a mech. He's going to go for a Shadow Blade. Uh, okay, well, as far as the Viper's item build, I like the phase boots on Viper. I think they're underutilized. Um, they'll help him chase down targets quite a bit. The Shadow Blade, however, uh, I, I'm not a huge fan. They need to start really making things happen with this Viper and Slardar. I think the mechanism would have helped them play even more aggressively. And the Shadow Blade just kind of seems out of place. As long as those Brigarditos catch on to the fact that he's building it, which they should, just check his inventory once, and that's all they really need to do. And then with the sentries, that item is going to be pretty useless. Gives him a little bit of damage and attack speed, but that's about it. I would like the Shadow Blade a lot more if... The Keeper of the Light wasn't Keeper of the Light, and if the Slardar went for a Blink Dagger first. If yes. they had a super aggressive lineup, then yes, go for that super aggressive item. You'll be able to gank people, you'll be able to solo kill the Skywrath Mage and the Invoker and pretty much anyone else you get your hands on just because you do so much damage. But as it stands right now, it's like they're split between a couple of builds. Slardar wants to be on the tanky train, which is... Uh, not inherently aggressive, and Keeper of the Light also not inherently an aggressive hero, whereas Viper is going for a super aggressive item. So they uh, need to communicate this a little bit better, I feel. Hopefully it won't bite them in the ass, because I want to see this Viper with Shadow Blade do well, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Top lane, though, Chronosphere onto Pandaren. The Sunstrike is going to land squarely onto the Slardar. That Vanguard for adding some pretty good value. Here comes Shadow Shaman. He's going to lace up down some wards, plus a Viper Strike onto the Void. They're going to bring down him. Now the Marana will leap out successfully, but Vip, uh, the Slardar hot on her tail. It's not going to be anything else, but they use Serpent Wards yet again for the Faceless Void kill. Every single time he uses that, that's one more tower that breathes a sign of relief. Yeah. I don't know, that said, this Viper and Slaughter is still looking very good in the net worth department. Um, yeah. Keeper of Light is going to be building towards some mechanism for his team. He's going to recall somebody, I believe that is the Brewmaster towards mid, as they want amount of defense here. Um, yeah, with the Brewmaster in there, he doesn't have a Blink Dagger, so it's going to be hard for him to get in range for a good ultimate. Um, yeah, for now, that's going to be about it. The push in mid's repelled as Tier 2 Tower up in top's going to take a lot of hurt. Arrow hits creep. Yeah, this Viper does a ton of damage with his Nether Toxin phase boots and the additional bump of attack speed given by that amulet. They're going to bring everyone into the middle lane. I think it should be time for uh, for the Dyer to look towards Roshan, if not, or maybe after this tower. Roshan seems like a good idea because, again, they have the Amplified Damage. They'll have Serpent Wards in 40, but they're going to get tagged with an arrow. Is there a Chronosphere? Not for a long time, but it looks like the Brewmaster is going to die regardless, stunned up for the entire time. This Brewmaster hasn't really impressed me, to be honest. Uh, yeah, with 0-6-2 on the Brewmaster's ultimate, helped him 
get one assist, but that was about it. He hasn't been able to make much once he got his level 6, and the early laning was just so awkward as far as his positioning against the Faceless Void. They played hyper-aggressive, and, I don't know, just very low probability kills. As for now, the push is going to subside in mid. They've dropped it down to about half health, similarly to the Tier 2 tower up on top, although that one's a bit lower since the Viper tagged it a couple more times. Uh, but yeah, this Shadow Shaman is going to have Arcane's blink, presumably before the Brewmaster, at the current rate of farming. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. The um, mechanism coming out from the Keeper of Light, it's going to be online fairly quick as far as supports are concerned, just blasting down these creeps. He's been able to get a decent amount of CS for his support at the very least, and he hasn't died that much, 2-2 two, two, and 0. Um, so yeah, I think he'll be able to make up for the fact that Viper doesn't have it at a, yeah, yeah, at a decent window. I love me some Shadow Shaman Blink, but at this stage, the Brewmaster Ultimate is still, I would say, one of the scariest things on the map. Maybe the Viper is scarier, maybe the Chronosphere is scarier, but in general, the... Uh, the blink into clap split is what you want to be initiating off of. Now, they do have the blink dagger finally up from Slardar. Blink dagger, Vanguard, 15 minutes in. It's a good amount to farm, so he's doing pretty well in the gold per minute. He's, on, on, in fact, on top of that chart. But uh, I feel like he could have just gone for the blink dagger and would have gotten a lot more for his team. But it's go time now. He's going to sprint forward and is going to catch the Sand King clap and then beat down with Amplify damage. But now the Skyrath Mage does circle in. He's out of mana, however, so the Skyrath is unable to get the kill here, the Invoker picks up a 16-minute Recovery Midas. It's an Exhort Invoker, so you would expect that. But also the Shadow Blade on Viper, and he reveals that back to Marana. Yeah, and well, TP away from the Marana, she'll be just fine. As Boxy probably could have gone for a couple more auto attacks, but in the end, not going to matter. His Sunstrike, it looks like it got the kill on the Slardar, and they're making a big fight as the Brewmaster split does come out. They're trying to stun up somebody, but they don't have True Sight behind the tower, do they? Uh, not sure what was dropped, or they dusted it up. They get the Cyclone on the Invoker, then drop him back down. At this point, he doesn't have True Sight. Surfboard's dropped at the tier 1 tower. They should be able to get that one without much contest as they jump in. Bash onto the Keeper of the Light. Will he have enough damage with that Mask of Madness? He's being slowed down a little bit. Shadow Shaman secures the last hit, and he will get the Keeper of Light, but it looks like at the cost of his own life with the e shock and the damage from the wards he backtracks a couple of those auto attacks and it looks like link will he survive the sunshine comes through the brewmaster is going to die for a sixth time in this game and now everybody's just so darn low the viper should be able to clean up double kill for box leap away as well as time walk will keep run and face this void safe respectively and well skyrath mage was able to walk towards the left will he be okay however with this shadow blade on the viper he might be able to find this kill yeah skyrath mage is just going to back off that was fairly greedy you know right before that happened the marana was teleporting from right underneath the viper if Viper dropped the Viper Strike, he could have just killed the Marana. Like, she took so much damage from just, like, three right clicks because of those phase boots plus Nether Toxin. But Viper feeling merciful as Pandarin does jump in once again. He kind of jumped the gun, this Slardar, in that uh, previous fight. He, I think, drew out a Chronosphere, but, uh, I mean, it's at the cost of your Slardar's life. And with no teammates behind it, it was a real messy fight for found new friends. Yeah, for sure. For now, they are... Pinging out the Roshan Pit without server words for another 30 seconds or so. Not sure if they can actually go for that. And, I don't know, can't tell if that was actually the Ka Keeper of Light as the Faceless Void gets caught out with the Slaughter. The Viper Strike will be enough to... Yeah, yeah, the uh, extra damage will be there as the Sun Strike. Not sure where that landed, if it landed at all. It was uh, aimed towards the Slardar, and I don't believe it connected. But Viper is going for... A very different build than what we knew, usually see from Vipers. The Shadow Blade and Phase Boots, that's strange in and of itself. But now we have an Oblivion Staff, and that spells Orchid. That does spell Orchid. It's okay, I suppose. Honestly, I, I don't like it. He needs to start getting a lot of kills and a lot of kills fast. In order to make that item effective, Faceless Void's eventually going to build himself into a BKB. Hopefully it's his next item. Invoker also might consider it if it really becomes an issue for him. But honestly... This Orchid, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to get in position to actually make it worthwhile. It's going to help his uh, solo killing potential for sure if he's able to catch somebody out. And that really feels like it's the build that Viper is kind of going for. But honestly, I think if he just went for normal utility and if he wants to build in damage, maybe just some standard damage items would even be a little bit better. He's like building himself a Clinks right now. He wants the invisibility. He wants the Orchid. And then he could just pop people. And if you find Marana or if you find the Skywrath Mage... Hell, even the face is void. If you silence him up and then drop a Viper Strike, he will just get obliterated. So, you know, it's a very unique way to play Viper. It's a very uncommon way to play Viper, but 
uh, pubs all around the world play him like this, so it has to have some merit, right? It's a decent damaging build if you yeah. can keep your positioning really tight. And that's really the question. Is he going to be able to do that? The rest of his team, they're able to get the Roshan with the Serp Wards as well as the Minus Armor coming up from Slardar fairly easily. No Contest coming up from Los Bucarditos. Although, if they were able to catch out a good Chronosphere with the Invoker Spells and Scarth Mage, maybe they'd be able to do something about that. Uh, but for now, that is going to be the damage of it. As the Sand King finally oh. picks up his Blink Dagger, didn't see where that happened. Um, he, yeah. he just misclicked and pressed Epicenter oh. in the jungle just with no one. That's kind of sucky. That really does. When did he pick up that blink dagger? Uh, I think he literally just did. That's what I thought. Like when he casted Epicenter like 30 seconds ago. That is that is the saddest Sand King I've ever seen. Unfortunately, he didn't catch the Epicenter on camera because I just thought he was jungling away as normal. But yeah, very, very unfortunate. Invisibility Rune picked up by the Shadow Shaman. Not going to scout anybody out as FNAF are looking for blood down here. I oh, know the Sand King hasn't been able to do much. An 817 will be able to TP out. No, the extra Nether Toxic damage was enough. And Viper catches himself a kill with the Shadow Blade. And Viper can continue to do that even better now that he has another 2100 gold. So Orchid is going to be online very shortly. And now he hits level 16. This Viper is an incredibly deadly assassin. And it's a refreshing change of pace, I think, to say the very least, to see a Viper that's able to pump out this much damage. Like going for full on Nether Toxin. Then going for this super aggressive build, it's really nice to see. And with the Keeper of the Light trying to defend their towers, I think Viper might just get away with it. As though the Keeper of the Light's going to need a little bit more Illuminate in order to fully protect their towers. If they keep their towers defended, boy, that's enough of that though, because we have a jump in, clap split onto Citrix. The Burst Strike's going to fly through, and it's going to almost kill off the Slaughter, but he has an Aegis, he doesn't really care. Invoker sent up into the air, and they will shock down the Skywrath Mage as Invoker does drop to the floor. He is dusted up, and he's trying to run away, but I don't think that's going to happen. Found new friends, they claim two kills, defend their tier one tower, and that's only at the cost of the Aegis, not too bad. Yeah, I know it was a good initiation coming out from the Brewmaster, found himself a triple clap as well as his split. And although with the sprint on the slaughter, he just fell too quickly to the uh, combo coming up from the Invoker, coming back after the Aegis, they're going to be pretty happy with that, especially if they can get this tier 2 tower. They have the Serp Wards, and honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to them committing to that, although they'll try to get it without uh, using them. Arrow attacks, uh, 419, but in the end, not going to matter. Yeah, they had to spread out a little bit more. That could have been a four-man Chronosphere at the base of Void was around, but they dropped the Serpent Wards, and now Chronosphere will hit absolutely freaking nothing. That's got to feel bad. Sand King's just jump forward for a burst strike onto the Slardar, but that's not going to yield anything either as the Sand King did get hit with that crush. Silence now onto the Slardar as the Viper gets pulled in by the Keeper of the Light, but they take down the tower. That should be it. With no more Serpent Wards available, they should not want to fight this anymore. I think go to the bottom lane is going to be the best choice for them. Or, or just falling back seems a pretty good choice as well as Shadow Shaman picking up a really nice Force Staff for the team. That's Blink Dagger. Everyone has a Blink Dagger. It's insane. Yeah, absolutely. That's three on the side of FNF with the Shadow Blade on the uh, Viper. Lots of positioning items for them. Blink onto the Sand King as well as the Time Walk on the Faces Void. Lots of ways these team fights can go down. I don't know, Loose Breaker Ditos, their team fights have just been pretty abysmal. The Faces Void Chronos for the last fight as well as wasting the Epicenter. There wasn't enough damage. Arrow going to land onto the Pandaren, the Scarred Mage ulti to follow his suit. They're not going to spread that damage in. Well, he's going to be brought down very quickly as Faces Void. He's looking for blood. He has a Mask of Madness activated. He could be in a lot of trouble, however. He doesn't have a team backing him up there. And the Tier 2 Tower is going to stand for now. Is on the back lines. They catch out the Viper who is going aggressive with that Shadow Blade, but he's going to be hit with an arrow. And now the Epicenter committed. Not sure if that was necessary as Pretentious uses the second Epicenter to really no avail. What was the Viper doing there? Like, was he... They don't have any sentries there, so... Viper must not have been invisible. Did he just go in without Shadow Blade? Like, I, what, was, what was happening there? I have no idea, honestly. I... I don't know. I was not watching the Viper's path, but he made a very interesting maneuver down back behind the Tier 2 Tower when the entirety of Los Picarditas were waiting to potentially catch somebody out in the retreat of FNF. Um, yeah. That was that was very interesting. Yeah, this Shadow Shaman is very farmed, in fact, for his support. Seeing it at uh, 6.2k gold, mostly due to the fact that he's 5-0 and 1, hasn't died a single time this game. And yeah, he's been able to keep up. And They're looking for bottom lane now. Link is going to get jumped on shortly. Slardar is going to, well, jump and stun all the creeps. They sure got them, but... The TP out from the Faces Void, he's going to keep himself very safe, so he's going to be fine. 
Arrow will land a Viper on top lane, but yeah, just a couple skirmishes here and there not really resulting in anything as Marana is the one to pick up the mechanism for the Bricky side. Kind of an uncharacteristic item for Marana, but it's not too terrible considering how crappy her early start was. I don't know, this is going to be very hard for the Marana to get all of her spells off because with mech she can't get off every single one of them. Like, she just doesn't have the mana pool to sustain that. Usually you see mechanism on your support Maranas uh, after they go arcanes in order to have that extra sustain. So they'll need to have an arcane boots on the Sand King or the um, Scarath Mage popped in order for to uh, get all of her uh, utility done inside those team fights. I think it's okay for her to pick it up because I don't think anybody else would be able to get that farm. But that's going to stop Los Precarditos from really transitioning late game. They have a Faceless Void that's being outfarmed by the enemy Shadow Shum that has very little to nothing. He's about to have his Maelstrom, but he just dies too quickly with Mask of Madness on an arrow. Not going to catch anything out. Um, but yeah, I don't know for now. FNF, they have a pretty big advantage. Let's see if they're going to be able to hold it up with their very aggressive item choices that are kind of focusing on this window in the game till about 35 minutes in. Yeah, the Viper has just been farming slash pushing up the top lane. He might catch the Faceless Void. This is going to be a huge pickoff as he does turn himself invisible. Link is going to get silenced and Viper struck. This should be a free kill for the Viper. I don't think the Faceless Void is going to get out. Four staff, not enough. Citrix is here for a deafening blast, but Viper is happy to take that one. Now I think he should fall back and be yanked back in from the Keeper of the Light because he's being chased down. Uh, Citrix, I don't think you could do this, man. You probably shouldn't even try. Uh, the Viper does escape, and I think it's about time for 419 to pull everyone down to the bottom lane. He's going to start doing that immediately. It's time for the push. They're going to deploy the Sentry Wards, but instantly the, uh, the Epicenter is there. Going to catch two. They need the mech to pop, but they actually already used it. It doesn't do that much damage. It's only a level 1 Epicenter, and he's walking through the Serpent Wards, and now a 2 Man stuff for Pandaren. Messonese gonna get focused down. Sunstrike will not land at anyone. They do take out the Skyrath Mage first, and now Nady the Marana is gonna be shot down by the Viper. Serpent Ward still firing away at the tower and found new friends. Found a very nice opening on the Faceless Void pickoff. It's very easy to push up the high ground when you don't have to worry about a Chronosphere. They might take down this mid rack. This yeah, bottom. X. On to Citrix, and now they jump in. Oh, Pandaren going to get a nice double crush, and now it, they're going to lose more. As the Faceless Void is back, they get a buyback. A nice Chronosphere onto four, but will he be able to do enough damage? He'll be able to focus on Shadow Shump at the very least. Sun Strike onto the Brewmaster. It's between these Brewmaster as well as the Slaughter. Now the Ice Ball will delay things for now. Four step away by the um, Invoker. We'll keep the Faceless Void alive, but Citrix won't be dived. As the bottom racks are going to fall, a lot of buybacks being spent, but in the end, it's not going to be too much as well they look for a burst strike they catch up the brewmaster but no follow up and now he's gonna get orchided up he might actually die one more auto attack almost would have been enough to finish him off that would have been a three shot kill but four one uh four one nine and he gets shaded upon by link he's backtracking a lot of damage however brewmaster in a little bit of trouble he's stuck in the ice wall viper off to the side though gonna unload everything that he has onto the skyrath mage and then focus on the citrix skyrath uh will be dropped and now invoker next to follow marana doesn't have a leap she's gonna go down and portentious is just Watching from the base as his team gets eaten one after another after another. Viper completely ignored during the fight. That's exactly the positioning that we were talking about. If your Viper can stay in that sort of position the entire fight, the Orchid, the Shadow Blade, it just does work. And now he's sitting at 4,400 gold. Yeah, I don't know. At this point, the Viper could go for anything he wanted. He could go for a Butterfly, although up against Faces Void, not the best uh, choice there. He could go for Mantis style. I don't know, he could tank up, but it is going to be a Reaver towards the heart. Yeah, I like this choice coming out from the Viper. Even if they try to focus it down, it's going to be pretty difficult. He's starting to pick up a lot of momentum, and really a lot of what that last fight showed was just low speaker dust weren't able to get a clean initiate, which is what they really need to do. They need to get a Chronosphere that catches out heroes while there's backup. He got a four-man Chrono, which is nice and all, but without an Invoker or Sanking Epicenter to back that up, it didn't do much. They had one Sunstrike, and that was about it. Sanking's Epicenter was only level one during that engagement, and they only caught like three of the ticks, and usually if you get Epicenter as a Keeper of Light, you're going to die, but it only dropped him down to about half. So, yeah, for now... F and F are looking really strong as they jump into mid, looking for the Chronosphere. It only catches out the Keeper of Light, and it looks like, I don't know, I'd be pretty fine as a Keeper of Light, but is he even going to die? The misses, and now the Serpent Ward trap. They're going to be able to catch out Link, and Link should die. The Blink Light actually going to pants him outside of the wards, and that might have saved him, but no, in the end, the Blink Forward, he's mana linked up, nowhere to go. And now, the Crush going to miss by the Slaughter, doesn't catch out, but the Bash will catch out the uh, Scar of the Mage as they pick up two in the mid lane, and I'm not sure there's really anything stopping F and F right now. They have a buyback on the Faceless Void, but he'll have no Chrono. 
Unfortunately, the Mass Serpent Wards aren't available, but just a really nice pseudo bait by the Keeper of the Light. I'm sure that wasn't intentional. I'm sure he was freaking out the entire time, but hell, he keeps himself alive, and the wards were deployed, killing off two heroes for Brickies. And really, I think, the bo going back to the bottom racks fight, a lot of that, if not most of that, wait, no, not just yet. Okay, no, Slaughter will initiate them back off. A lot of that going so well is kind of, you can kind of attribute that to Box, but initiation onto Citrix, he does get clapped and then rocked up. He does throw the Deafening Blast already, but now he's going to be focused down. He's amplified and he's up in the air, now he's down on the floor, and now he's crushed, and well, Epicenter's going to come in, not do that much. He might kill off the Slardar, that'll be something I guess, but Box is just still going to town on everyone. He's going to be fine. Blink out, run Slardar! Okay, place your bets. Will Slardar live? No. I don't think so. He's running. Radiant go, go, go! <laughs> he's alive, oh, no. right? The Vanguard regen? Maybe. We'll have to see with another blink out. I think he's going to be just fine. <laughs> oh, this is more entertaining than what's happening at the enemy base, which is actually nothing as they've completely backed off. Yeah, he's going to get to the base before the arcane bolt. Where did it actually go? I don't even know. I don't know. It's invisible has... on my screen. Yeah, me too. He has 400 HP, though. He's fine. But yeah, again, he's, he's fine. the Viper has been setting up some real great stuff. And this is something that you won't get from a Viper who's going to go mech into tankiness. Because he wasn't the kill in the face is void up on top lane to set up the bottom lane push. You can't get that nor ordinarily from a Viper. That just doesn't happen. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I wouldn't have minded a Clinks pickup from FNF, but I don't know. In the end, Viper Clinks is working out for them. Yeah, they did pick up a Clinks. He's just uh, has a slow effect. It's kind of weird the new change to Clinks. It looks like a dragon, but it's certainly a Clinks that's being played right now. Yeah, I don't know, now he has the heart, and now he's going to be more of your traditional Viper as far as being able to tank, because Rashawn's going to fall. I uh, don't think they needed Serpent Wards for that, the damage was plenty, and in the end, yeah, they're going to have that for the high ground push. They didn't, weren't able to uh, secure the Tier 3 or the Rax in mid, but I don't think this is going to be very hard for them to do so, although the dream is live for Los Bricarditos to get the perfect initiation as well as the uh, jump with a huge epicenter. Maybe they'll be able to drop down multiple heroes. Um, but still, it's going to be incredibly hard for them to do so. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. This is a perfect timing for found new friends. The Keeper of the Light pick up the Aghanim Scepter, and if you look at the clock, it's 5 a.m., so the daylight is about to hit, which means they get all the recalls, all the blinding lights, and that really, really balanced Illuminate heal. So this push, they don't have to commit to this. They could drop Serpent Wards, poke at it a little bit, but look, really just take their time and look for that perfect initiation because they have unlimited sustain. Also, where is this face's boy? He needs to get back into this fight. They deploy the Serpent Wards, but they have to spread out. In the meantime, Viper assassinates a couple in the back end. They get a stun onto Portentious, and he's going to be brought down instantly. Where's the Chrono Spear? It's not going to be there because he gets hexed up immediately. Now blinding light, so even if he does get the Chrono Spear off, he won't be able to do any damage. That's three down for Brickies, and found new friends have just completely breached the base. GG called. What a game. Yeah, I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting anything like this coming out from this game, especially after looking at the draft. I was expecting, I don't know, a Keeper of the Light that ended up doing nothing and a Viper that went normal tanky and Los Breaker Adidas would have been able to combo their team fights well and end up securing that for themselves. But in the end, we had our Viper going Shadowblade into Orchid and it just worked wonders for found new friends. Even though their Brewmaster had a terrible laning experience, this Viper carried them pretty hard, shutting down the Invoker early and it was just a great game for them. Yeah, Viper and Shadow Shaman getting all those early kills, uh, taking it from the Slardar, but hey, your support needs farm too, and he made good with that. He got the very quick Blink Dagger and then set so much stuff up with those Serpent Wards, so found new friends are going to take a pretty cool victory over Brickies, and well, this is the best of two series, so there's another game coming up right in a little while. Yeah, so don't go anywhere. Game 2 coming up shortly. Thanks for watching. GG to both teams. GG.